Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Red Beans and Rice. Red beans and rice is a dish that's made around the world. All different cultures and cuisines have their own version of this dish, but today we are traveling down to the American South, Louisiana, for Creole-style red beans and rice. And this dish is pure comfort food. Now that all starts with our ham hock stock, which I made yesterday, so I'm gonna throw you back to yesterday so you can check out how to put together this ham hock stock. The process of putting this stock together is gonna to take a good four or so hours, so we're gonna actually just cook this inside on the range today. So obviously the first thing we need uh, for a ham hock stock are ham hocks, uh, and sometimes you'll find them in a little bit longer shank version like this. Sometimes you'll get the ankle, which is the actual hock, and that's got a lot of collagen and less meat on it. Uh, but either way, you're gonna want about two to three pounds. These are always smoked, that's the way we want them. We want a nice smoky ham hock stock, even though we're using the shanks today. Uh, but this is going to allow us a lot more uh, of the shredded meat to work with for our red beans and rice. Now everything's just going into a stock pot. Beyond that, we've got about four cups of yellow onion, large dice, our mirepoix here two cups carrots, large dice, two cups celery. It's okay to get those leaves in there. You don't have to be too picky. This is actually a great utilization for all these little pieces that maybe you would normally just kind of cut off and throw away. So from here, we move on to our aromatics. We've got some thyme. We're just gonna throw a good four to six sprigs of thyme in there, a few bay leaves. Uh, we gotta get some black peppercorns in here. Just gonna do these whole, we'll do two tablespoons cherry black peppercorns. And then we've got our garlic, um, which, you know, not something you always add to a stock, but something I want in our ham hock stock today. I'm just gonna cut that open and throw it all in there, paper and all. This is all gonna get strained off here at the end of the day. And then finally, some parsley stems. Again, another kind of piece of, of the uh, parsley that rarely gets used is the stem, uh, but there's lots of good flavor in there, so. We'll save the leaves for garnish and be able to utilize the stems here in the stock. I'm just gonna tie them up just to make it a little bit easier to fish out. And then we just need to get all of this covered in cold water. So we'll start with this four quart container. I'm gonna fill this up pretty full here. Love to have two to three quarts of stock when we're done. And you can keep an eye on your level. Like I'm seeing that we're like kind of right at the top of this rivet bolt right here. So we'll know how much that reduces uh, over the next several hours. Now the thing about making stocks is you never really want this to like boil. Um, so at first we can go a little higher with the heat, but as soon as this starts to approach a simmer, um, and you just start to see that steam coming off the top, you wanna to lower that temperature and keep it low. We don't wanna simmer this down necessarily, we just wanna slowly let it cook down, uh, never at a full simmer. So just when you start to see those bubbles coming up, gonna lower that temperature down, you get kind of this steaminess going on. That's what we're looking for. We just want it to barely just simmer, gently cook down like that over the next several hours. So the other thing we can do today is rinse and soak our beans so that they're ready to cook tomorrow. Now these are light red kidney beans. They're not necessarily the small red Cajun uh, red beans that you'd be used to seeing in the South, but we don't really have access to those around where I live. So if you don't either, you can substitute some kidney beans. So we're using one pound of beans. You wanna make sure you have plenty of extra water in there because they are gonna to start to soak that water up. And you'll see tomorrow uh, when we get into this video that they're going to expand quite a bit. We'll pop the lid on. You can leave these out on the counter overnight. Well, it's been a little more than four hours now that our stock's been cooking down. I'm gonna take these ham shanks out of here so we can shred the meat off of these and use them in our red beans tomorrow. And now for the remaining ingredients, we're just gonna strain this off really well and then chill down the stock until tomorrow. Now I'm gonna run this through the chinois, which is a super fine strainer. Uh, if you have something of a mesh strainer that's a little bit wider openings, you, you're gonna wanna put some cheesecloth down in here to catch 
any of that smaller particulate that's going to come through. Without pushing anything through the chinois, I'm just going to work this a little bit to get the maximum amount of stock out of it. As you can see, we're just over that two quart line, which is great because we're going to need about that much to make our red beans and rice. So once we've got all that liquid worked out of there, we can discard of the solids. You can actually see that fat already separating off from the liquid. So we're just going to throw this into the fridge. I'm not going to put this on here tight because it's still hot. Um, if you got an ice rod, you could cool this down like you do with soup um, to make it go a little bit quicker. But what's going to happen here overnight now is this bottom part's going to remain liquid, hopefully a little gelatinous uh, just because of the connective tissue in the ham shanks. And then this layer right here is going to be solid fat, which we actually could do some cooking with, and it's going to have a ton of great flavor. Now for the ham shanks, we'll get rid of these bones, shred up the meat that's left there, and discard any of the uh, extra fat, connective tissue, that kind of thing. But this stuff, that's going to be great in our red beans and rice tomorrow. So now that we've got that ham stock put together, it's cooled down overnight, our beans are soaked, we're ready to put this thing together. We've got a little prep work to do, but before we do that, I want to fire up the grill so we can get our charcoal hot. And today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3. We're just going to be burning some big block charcoal. And we've got a, a decent time that we need to cover for our cook today. So we need to use a decent amount of charcoal. But one of the questions that we get a lot about the Kamados is, I can't get it hot enough, what am I doing wrong? A lot of times the answer is you're putting too much charcoal in. So you kinda gotta find that fine line where you've got enough room for airflow that the actual heat can, can rise up nice and hot. Probably gonna be cooking around four to 500 today. Um, so you need enough charcoal to cover that heat, but you need enough airflow to get it hot. So we'll nestle some fire starters in here. Get these, uh, get these going and head over to the table to do a little knife work. So we're gonna start here by putting together our Holy Trinity Cajun Mirepoix. I know that technically red beans and rice is considered a Creole dish, but certainly a lot of similarities between the Creole and Cajun cuisines and this Cajun Holy Trinity is the right way to start and any number of dishes as far as flavor bases go. If you're not familiar, what that means is we're changing the classic French mirepoix from being two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery to being two parts onion, one part bell pepper, and one part celery. We're also gonna spice it up a little bit with some jalapeno today, and of course, you gotta have some garlic. So there we have two cups of onion and a cup each of the bell pepper and celery. I'm gonna add some jalapeno on top of that. Next thing we got here, a few cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna get these peeled and minced up. Last bit of knife work here. We've got some andouille sausage, about a half pound. And I'm just gonna get this diced up. So here we have our ham stock that we made yesterday. Like I mentioned yesterday, you're gonna have that layer of fat on the top. So I'm just gonna scoop that off of there. Some good flavor in there. We'll probably end up throwing some of that into the pot. But we don't need all of that in there. So now we've got a little more than two quarts of ham stock that we can work with today, which is perfect. That's what we're gonna need. And then onto our beans, which have been soaking for about 24 hours now. These I'm just gonna strain and rinse one more time. Grill stabilized now at 500. I'm gonna throw a couple chunks of pecan wood in here just to put off a little extra smoke for the flavor, for the aroma, for the smoky goodness. And we'll set up direct 
and get our Dutch oven right over the heat to preheat. And then as soon as this is hot, we're gonna brown our andouille. I'm gonna start by throwing down a couple tablespoons of chili infused oil. So let's just leave those be to get a little browning on them, create a little fond on the bottom of that pan, and then we can add our veggies. The andouille is looking good. Great browning, rendered out some of that fat from the andouille, and that combined with that chili oil is gonna be a great base for cooking a holy trinity in. You're gonna hit this with a little seasoning. We've got the Cattleman's Grill Cajun Fusion here where you're gonna find a lot of those same spices that you find in Creole. Do about two tablespoons. This immediately soaks up all that fat. So now this is gonna soften. We're gonna sweat it down a bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of that fat from the ham stock. Just a tablespoon or so and throw that in there. This stuff has incredible aroma on it. It smells like the stock. It smells like bay leaves to me. We're just packing that flavor in there. All right, let's close it up and let it work. Veggies are getting softened up now. I'm gonna throw in our garlic. We cook that down for just a minute. And we'll move on. We've got some uh, ham hock, actually ham shank shredded up that needs to go in here. Get a little bit of hot sauce in here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in now. Today we're using the Cattleman's Grill Pit Fire Hot Sauce. I'm gonna throw in a quarter cup. One, I like this for the vinegar, um, which sometimes you'll see just straight up vinegar added to red beans and rice. But this is gonna offer a little bit more than just straight vinegar. Touch of heat, not a lot. But this is a great sauce for anything kind of Cajun Creole, that, that sort of vein. We also got all these, the shredded up shank meat that's just going to like soak up flavor. It's gonna thicken up our beans and rice. Let's throw a couple cups of that in there. We've got beans. There's beans that are soaking overnight. One pound of dried beans. And we're gonna cover it all up with our ham hock stock. That's right around two quarts, but it's going to thicken and cook down quite a bit as these beans soak up the liquid as well as that ham. So at this point, we just need to close up the grill and let it work. Our beans have been simmering away for over an hour now. You can see our, our liquid level is getting a little low here. Um, so we're gonna re replenish that. Because just by stirring these, I can tell these beans need some more time before they get fully softened up. They should squish pretty easily. So we're getting, we're, we're getting there, we're making some progress. But we need just a little bit more of that going on. So we'll close this up and just let it keep working. Two hours into the cook now, guys, and our beans are getting plenty tender. We press on that. It just kind of wants to mash. Now, I like this a little bit thicker, a little bit creamier. Uh, so without adding any sort of thickening agent or a roux, what I'll do is I'll just get in here and mash those beans just a little bit. We're not going to bust them all up. But as those bust open and release their starches into the liquid, it just thickens everything up. Smells incredible. So let's let that starch just do a little bit more work. We're almost done here though. I'm gonna get one little taste to check for salt. Mmm. That ham flavor popping through right off the bat. I don't think it needs any adjustment, to be honest. Let's just put it all together. So going down with some white rice, just long grain rice cooked in the rice cooker, two parts water, one part rice. 
Uh, seasoned it up with a little bit of that chili oil that we used earlier and some salt, but nothing else special going on there. I'm just gonna get it smothered in our red beans. A little bit of fresh parsley on top. Another little dash of our pit fire. All right, let's dig in. Man, there's no joke comfort food right there. I love the way the rice is just soaking up any liquid that's left in the red beans. A ham hock stock. Mm. Did so much of the flavor work. You know, you can simplify this a little bit. Put your ham hocks and your bay leaves and all that stuff in when you're actually simmering it down. It's gonna take a little more time uh, to cook the beans in that situation. But for me, I love to have a great ham stock on hand anyway. You can throw that in the freezer, save it for another project. Uh, so to get like the full, like four hour simmer on the ham stock, then you match that with all the flavor that's in the beans, all those cages, spices and herbs and the cattleman's rub, um, you know, getting the full Louisiana experience here. And I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.